welcome back to our third and final segment. We're still looking at power in, in circuits. So now we've managed to look at a scenario where we've got two uh, you know, light bulbs. One has got double the resistance of the other and see how the power uh, actually uh, works out in, in that circuit. Now let's shift our attention to a, a parallel circuit, but using the very same you know, uh, uh, measurements for our, our battery you know, and the two uh, light bulbs with one having double the resistance of the other, okay? So predict what happens to power dissipated by uh, light bulbs connected in parallel, okay? So in the circuit, we'd use a 12 volt battery and then two light bulbs. Uh, what this means is that um, if the resistor two or light bulb two has got um, uh, a, a, you know, a resistance of X, let's say 10, okay? Then uh, resistor two, if it's 20, it means um, R1 is going to be 10. In other words, we are saying that R1, the resistance of light bulb one is equals to half uh, the resistance of R2. We're still saying the same thing, right? So we'll set up a circuit of this, so of this form, okay? And, and look at the different, uh, you know, quantities of electric circuits, which is your current, your voltage, you know, and your, 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 your resistance as well. But remember, in any, a, you know, um, you know, parallel circuit current is actually divided. Like in this case, this is our total current, okay? Because all the current passes through that point, okay? And then this total current is actually uh, equals to current one plus current two. So in this case, what do we have? Uh, the, it's it's one comma two amperes plus uh, zero comma six, okay? This actually gives us. Uh, our 1,80 MPS, which is the total current. This is what we mean when we say a parallel circuit is actually a current divider. But we would also verify if indeed voltage remains constant. All right. Okay. Now let's go to um, our simulation uh, very quickly and and and, and look at um, you know uh, what exactly that uh, is all about. Okay. Okay. Now. If this is the case, right, okay, uh, we have got our battery that has got a 12 volt, we've confirmed it's 12 volts, okay, uh, the resistance for R1 is 10 ohms. If R2 is double R1, it means that it must have uh, 20 ohms, right? It should have 20 ohms, so we've verified that, okay? So now, there is no current flowing in the circuit for one simple reason that uh, the switch is open. So the circuit is broken or it's incomplete, but the moment we close the switch, this is what happens. Both bulbs, they start to glow, all right? Now, if you look very carefully, the amount of current in the entire circuit is actually 1,8 uh, MPS. So the 1,8 MPS is split between the 10 ohm resistor, which receives uh, 1,2 uh, MPS, while the, the R2, which has got a 20 ohm resistance, has got half the current. It's very important to also notice that the current that goes through R1 is equal, is half, is actually double the current that goes through R2. So R2 has got a higher resistance, which explains why the current is actually lower, okay? So this comes from our understanding of the ohm's law. But let's verify something regarding the, the voltage, okay? So what is the voltage across the battery? The voltage across the battery, uh, there it is. is, we've got 12 volts, okay, that's the reading. So if we connect again the voltmeter across the, the light bulb, we still get 12 volts, okay? Does that mean something? Yes, indeed. It means that even uh, when we connect the voltmeter across R2, we still get 12 volts. So we get a sense that voltage remains constant in this parallel circuit. The only thing that is split is the current, and the current in this case uh, is split proportionally. The one that has got a, a higher resistance gets less current, which in this case is the 20 ohm resistor. That's, it, that's it's got what, 0 0.6 MPS, right? So this is basically, but if you look at the, the brightness of these two, uh, we, we can tell, okay, yes, there's more current for you know, um, resistor one, okay? 
That's why it glows brighter than resistor two for the same voltage. Now, if we go back to our um, slide, we can say, okay, let's determine the power across uh, of dissipated by R1. So this is our R1, okay? And then this is our R2. Remember, R1 is equals to 10 ohms, okay? While R2 is equals to 20 ohms. That, this is what we meant when we say R1 is half R2 or R2 is double R1, okay? So we are saying that R2 is equals to two times R1, okay? That's, that's, the, that's the, the, the proportion in terms of the ratio, right? Now, if we are to determine the power for R1, okay, we know that for R1, we, we have both voltage, you know, resistance, we also have current, okay. So we can use any of the three power formulae to determine the, the, the power dissipated by light bulb one, okay. We can use, uh, for argument's sake, V um, uh, I, okay, which is in this case, uh, our voltage is the same for both, which is 12, okay. And then the current that goes through R1, uh, as you can see from the reading, it's 1,2 MPS. Okay, so power for R1, okay, P for R1 is equals to, let's go to our calculator, right? Okay, so from our calculator, we've got 12, okay, 12 multiplied by 1,2, right? This gives us 14,4, um, right? So this is 14,4 watts, okay? Now let's determine the power um, that is dissipated by R2. So P for R2 is actually equals to, we, we have the voltage which is constant, which is 12, okay? Um, multiplied by the current, which is not comma six. You'd realize that the current that goes through uh, uh, P, uh, R2 is actually uh, half that of R1. So P R2 is equals to, if we go to our calculator once more, okay, so we've got 12 multiplied by not comma six, okay? That gives us a power of uh, 7 comma two, right? 7, okay, comma two, right? This gives us 7 comma two watts. Now you realize that uh, from the observation that this is actually double that so the, the resistor that has got more current, even if we use the formula P is equals to I squared R, it will almost take us to the same thing because uh, the, the current is different and also the resistance are different. It means uh, P or uh, one is actually greater or double that of uh, R2. So as a result, that's why bulb one appears to be glowing brighter than bulb two. What that simply means is that the R1 is actually uh, converting a lot of electrical energy uh, to, to light per second compared to R2, which is why uh, P um, R1 is equal to two times uh, the power dissipated by resistor uh, two. Okay, so this is the, 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 the conclusion that we, we are able to to arrive at, okay. So this is very clear even in terms of brightness. That's why R, R1 is much brighter than R2, okay. Okay, now in summary, we understand that power is the rate of electrical energy conversion in a circuit. And when we talk about rate, we're talking about time. So we can think of power in terms of P is equals to uh, delta E, okay, change in energy per unit time because this is this has to do with work done, okay? That's our work uh, done, right? And once again, the power rating of a device is actually an indication of how much energy is transformed per second, okay? Let's, let's, let's break this down. If we talk about energy transformation per unit time, a unit of time 
is a second. And how long is that? It's exactly one second. So if you have a power rating, let's say of 7,2 uh, you know, watts like we saw in, with R2 in our, in our previous example, what that simply means is that in a second, that light bulb converts 7,2 joules of electrical energy into light, and maybe some of it heat for every second. So that's the, the long and short of it. Very, very important, okay? Uh, which takes us to uh, the next point, which says a, a watt of power is uh, one joule of electrical energy converted per second. So mathematically, we are still saying one watt of electrical power is equals to one joule of electrical energy converted for every second. So that's the main idea. Now, let's go back to our you know, uh, equations uh, that we used. We understand that uh, for us to measure power you know, practically in a second, we need a voltmeter reading across a component as well as a, an indication of how much current actually passes through that device uh, for every second you know, uh, or in terms of charge, right? Now, P is equal to VI. We can only use this formula to determine the power dissipated by you know, a, a component or a resistor in a second. If we know the voltage across it as well as the current that passes through that uh, particular uh, uh, component. And then the second one, P is equal to I squared R. You know, the, you'd realize that the first equation, there has no V. It does not involve, the second equation does not involve V. The assumption here is that um, V is actually uh, uh, constant, all right? Okay, so the, the, the three formulae will be provided in the data sheet, okay? So the formula sheet actually gives us a whole list of formulae, which we need not to cram, but we need to understand. So given a scenario, we must be in a position to identify, one, the correct formula, okay? Make sure that the units are in the correct SI, okay? If there are necessary conversions, you do carry those out before you actually do the substitution. So if a question has got three marks, what do you do? You, you identify the correct formula, do the substitution, and then give the answer, which should include the correct SI unit, okay? So in this case, P is equal to I squared R. It says to us, V will be constant. So uh, either the power rating will depend on the current or the resistance. In this case, uh, when we sometimes would, refer, would write this or represent it in terms of P is equal to V squared over R. It doesn't matter which formula you use. It will definitely give you one and the same thing, all right? So it will depend what quantities you are given. So you must collect the data. And then in this one, this one does not involve current. We would assume that the current is the same, you know, uh, it, it, it doesn't change. So uh, for you to identify the correct or the relevant formula, refer to, that, to the data sheet. Make sure that you copy the formula as it is. Now, speaking of copying the formula, it's not always that you will be required to calculate the power. You know, in some cases, you may be given the power and be looking for something else. That something else could be energy, could be work done, it could be current, it could be the resistance, it could be you know, uh, uh, the voltage or the potential difference. So it's very important that you copy the formula as, is, as it is given. Subsequent to that, you do the necessary substitution. And then only one of the quantities in the relevant equation that you have identified would, would be the unknown. And then you can isolate the unknown after the substitution has been carried out. I hope that makes uh, a lot of sense, right? Okay, so in, in a nutshell, uh, this is what we managed to, to look into today. We managed to look at power of electrical devices in series and parallel circuits, okay? And understand also that the Ohm's law plays a pivotal role in as far as power is concerned because we know parallel circuits are current dividers while these series circuits are potential dividers, okay? So that's, that's very, very important. And then, um, you know, you must also think about the cost of electricity as one of the real life applications of understanding what power involves. 
you understand that some devices, you know, they convert a lot of energy, uh, you know, per second. You know, these are heating devices that have got, you know, elements. It could be your geyser, you know, it could be your heaters. But the energy consumption would entirely depend on the amount of energy that device actually converts for every unit of time. Having said that, let's hope it makes a lot of sense. So these concepts uh, start to come together from the Ohm's law to understanding the power, which is basically what we were doing today. We certainly hope that um, these discussions, they actually help us to you know, simplify things even much uh, better. So for myself, uh, Temba Nube, cheers and bye-bye.